Live via satellite from Hollywood and London, it's Rockline, the show where you interview the biggest stars in rock and roll. Hello again, I'm Bob Coburn. Rockline is brought to you by Budweiser, nothing beats a bud. By AT&T, more ways to help you stay in touch. And by Visa, honored at over 6 million more places than American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Tonight, a very special edition of Rockline with David Gilmore and Nick Mason of Pink Floyd as we present the exclusive broadcast premiere of Shine On, their brand new box set. So get your questions ready and call us toll-free at 1-800-344-ROCK. That's 1-800-344-7625. One number toll-free from anywhere in the United States and Canada. In recent years, box sets and compact discs have become extremely popular. It's a good way to showcase the longevity of seminal artists in rock and roll. But the nine-CD box set Shine On by Pink Floyd is unprecedented. Nine CDs by one artist in a box with a 112-page book? Unheard of until now, and it can only come from a band with the magnitude of Pink Floyd. Let's welcome live from London, Mr. David Gilmore. Good morning to you, David. Good morning. And Mr. Nick Mason, welcome to Rockline once again. Thanks a lot. Uh, it is early there. Uh, why don't you uh, just uh, tell the audience what time it is in London right now? It's it's just after four thirty in the morning. Just and, after uh, four thirty. Been up all night. And... <laughs> <laughs> One of those, huh? Uh oh, <laughs> look out! No, no. Um, you know, with the exception of the uh, uh, one CD, the early singles, the CDs featured are entire albums intact. And I was curious why you chose to go that route as to a potpourri compilation of the entire catalog of Pink Floyd. Um. Well, they were all always designed to be that way, um, to be whole albums, and the point of this is not to sort of mix them all up, it's to give better quality on them, give better quality on the artwork, and um, all that kind of stuff, Bob. Well, if people could see the CD through the radio, they would understand why you did it that way, because you have accomplished all the things that you mentioned a moment ago. Not all the albums that Pink Floyd have done over the years are included, such as the first one, Adam Hartmother, and more, and... Uh, no double entendre intended there, since you did the soundtrack to the film more. How'd you choose what was included and what was not? What went into that decision? Just a, a sort of series of arguments, really, about <laughs> which ones were our favorites and which ones we thought were, were, were more relevant. It, it wasn't that... Di I think there was a general consensus on it, in fact. I mean, things like film tracks perhaps aren't as important in the, in the sort of... in trying to find a, a good cross-section of work. Uh, everything has been remastered, correct? Uh, yeah, everything has been remastered from the original uh, tapes, the original stereo mixes, uh, which I went and checked all of to find all those funny little bits of editing tapes stuck all over them. And, uh, yep, they've been completely remastered through the latest sort of analog to digital converters and with the best people and the best way I know how. So David, you personally went through the master tape vaults to make sure you had the originals and uh, even had to restore some of the old tapes, I understand. Uh, yes, went through all of them um, personally. Uh, one or two of the ones actually on the wall had to be uh, changed, substituted for um, alternative uh, tapes, because uh, when we made the wall album, every single mix we did, we did on two machines running s simultaneously. And a couple of them, that, there's a particular batch of, of, of tape, it's quite well known in the business, that uh, started deteriorating. And that batch of tape was from the late 70s into the early 80s, so there was a bit of deterioration on some of those. But we've still got all the other um, alternative uh, mixes. We, we had two machines running simultaneously. One was called Mork and the other one was called Mindy. God, God knows why. But so um, the, all the ones on the album were the Mork tapes, and uh, and so that one or two have been substituted for the Mindy tapes. The Mork tapes. So that, you know, so the, how the, these things are done technically. <laughs> how did you solve the problem of two record labels being involved in this? Uh, with great, great difficulty. They argued and bickered until the very last minute. And... Uh, and I do mean the last minute, uh, but that's record companies. Uh, I, you'd have to ask them. I don't know how they sort that sort of stuff out. Well, Not Pink, my business, you know. Pink Floyd originally was on Tower Records here in the United States, a label called Tower. Not the uh, chain mm. that's out right now, but originally on Tower. And I guess Capital bought that up long ago. But uh, interesting how the they Tower were was out. always Tower Records was always a subsidiary of Capital Records. It was uh, in the Capital Tower in Hollywood and. Uh, um, it was very, very well known and famous and had a soundtrack called Wild in the Streets back in the 60s. Right, right. 
We are going to begin musically tonight with the remastered version of Learning to Fly. This is Pink Floyd from the brand new nine CD box set, Shine On on Rockline on the Global Satellite Network, Learning to Fly. Welcome back. It's a two-hour special edition of Rockline. and Bob Coburn, Global Satellite Network, with David Gilmore and Nick Mason of Pink Floyd. We head to the phones. You get a chance to talk to the gentleman. Fred is on the line in Blacksburg, Virginia, a listener of Rock 105 in Christiansburg. And, Fred, you're on the air. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mason, Mr. Gilmore. Hi. Uh, it's good a morning. It's pleasure to have the chance to speak to you here. Uh, I picked up the new uh, box set today, and it's a really exceptional collection. Uh, my congratulations to yourself and engineer uh, Doug Sachs for the really fantastic sound. Thank you. Uh, the obvious question, uh, since there was no unreleased material here, uh, is there a release in the works for the foreseeable future that uh, would follow Shine On, including maybe unissued recordings, alternate takes, or maybe even some live material from the 70s? Well, it depends a little bit how old you are, how long you see the foreseeable future as. <laughs> um, but I think the answer is we we do have uh, some plans to do more work. So there might be a best of the rest forthcoming at some point? No, I think the, the next thing will be uh, another brand new, spanking new Pink Floyd album sometime uh, <clears throat> within a year-ish. Um, but um, and I don't foresee more... Um, old material coming out. We really don't have anything around that hasn't been released because the the way we work tends to be that um, if something we don't think it's going to really work or it's not going to be used, uh, we don't tend to work on it. So uh, virtually everything that we've actually worked on in the studio is out. So there's really nothing left in terms of outtakes and all that stuff and there's no properly recorded live stuff from the 70s that's uh, worth listening to and besides you can buy it all on bootleg <laughs> <laughs> it's already out there anyway <laughs> now the new album how far into that are you planning stages are you writing uh, how far into it are you uh, we're in the sort of thinking about discussing it stages. <laughs> <laughs> Fred, but seriously, <laughs> yeah, sort of serious discussion. <laughs> I have to confess, we're not a real long way down the road yet. Okay, Fred, that's a good call. Thanks for starting us off. And we have Ron on the line now in Columbus, Ohio, a listener of QFM 96. Ron, you're on the rock line. Hi, Nick. Hi, David. Good morning, Ron. <laughs> hey, listen, you guys played a concert here in Columbus a couple of years ago at uh, Ohio Stadium. The first ever uh, rock and roll concert held there. It was fantastic. Thank you. Thank and you very much. <laughs> my question is, um, on the new box set, the seven albums that you chose, as far as the selection criteria for those albums went, did you, go, did you base your decision upon chart success or upon uh, personal favoritism or maybe uh, the experiences behind the albums? What, did, what exactly did you use? Um, well, personal favoritism mostly. We thought the first uh, Piper at the Gates of Dawn, Dawn album, while it would have been nice to have it on there, it's um, kind of a different group, if you like, a different sort of thing. So we decided to leave that one off. Um, I would say Uma Guma and Atom Heart Mother were really personal favoritism. Um, or non favoritism. Yeah. Um, that's that's pretty much how it went. I, I think we were looking for favourites and for a sort of cross section of of work. And uh, I think what we tried to do was was take sort of various sections through through the last twenty odd years or whatever. What is it? Twenty five years. Twenty five. Uh, so we're celebrating that. Uh, <laughs> 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 must must be Where having fun because time is flying. <laughs> uh, Ron, another good call. Thank you very much. We'll let Dave has have his turn. He's in Augusta, Georgia, a listener of ninety six RXR in North Augusta. And Dave, you're on the show. Thanks. First of all, let me say, Mr. Gilmore, Mr. Mason, it is truly an incredible honor to be speaking to members of the greatest rock band of all time. Well, well gosh. <laughs> don't, don't hold back those feelings, Dave. Come on. <laughs> yeah. We like you too much, too. <laughs> <laughs> My question, uh, first of all, I'd like to ask a question, and then if you will, I'd like to present a hypothetical situation for you and get your response. First okay, of all, my, my question, I'd like to ask you, um, the uh, the new disc set, we'll all, of course, go out and buy it if we can afford it, but uh, during these hard economic times, there'll be a lot of people that'll kind of shy away from the price tag, and I'm wondering if maybe on down the road, 
if the uh, the uh, booklet and the uh, disc with the B sides, which some of which aren't available on CD, I'm wondering if they'll be released separately so that everybody can have a chance to get those items. Not something we've thought about, to be honest with you, and I can't give you an answer on that. I would have thought unlikely, because the the idea really is to try and um, devise something that makes this box set something special, and um, I I think they're quite uh, those old singles are a nice thing to sort of put in as a uh, as almost a sort of free part of a, a box set, but I don't think we'd even be particularly interested in in seeing them sold in their own right. And Dave, your hypothetical situation, please. Yes, let me ask you something I'm sure you're not prepared for, but I'd love an answer. If Sid Barrett were to come up to you guys sometime and convince you totally that he was completely stable and and great state of mind, and he wanted to uh, collaborate either on some live uh, things or some studio things, what would you? What do you think your uh, temperament would be on that? Well, I mean, I, uh, the possibility seems uh, rather unreal to me, but I, I certainly, if if he was in a great state, to to, to follow your hypothesis here, uh, <laughs> if he wasn't really in a in in a in a good state of mind, and, and then I would certainly be very very happy to help him do something, whether with us or without, I don't really know, but uh, certainly I'd I'd be prepared because he uh, was a great talent and uh, a great friend as well. And help start the band way back when. Dave, thank you for being on the air. We're going to play Comfortably Numb for you now. Of course, originally on the wall and now part of the nine CD box set. Shine On by Pink Floyd on Rockline and the Global Satellite Network. We are back with David Gilmore and Nick Mason of Pink Floyd. And uh, uh, you can have some fun with them on the air. The number's toll-free, 1-800-344-ROCK. That's the number John called in Lansing, Michigan. Q106 is our station. John, you're on the rock line. Hey, good evening. Hi. Hiya. I have a couple of quick questions. Uh, I can dig it. You can dig it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the We're first... into 60s jogging here. 60s. Well, that's, I was born around then, so uh, you're a little ahead of me. Me too. <laughs> right. I, I have two questions. Um, first, I was wondering what what brought about Rick Wright's departure in uh, after the Wall from the band, and what brought him back. Um, Let's start with that and save the other one. Let's start with that. Um, what brought about his departure was Roger getting awfully grumpy, but he's had a very disturbed childhood. So, <laughs> and. Uh, so when Roger departed, Rick came back. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it's a it's a one word answer really, Roger. <laughs> I noticed in the booklet the the, the term expelled was used. It, yeah. uh, yes, and the uh, the second part of the question there, Jen. Well, uh, after Roger was expelled. Um, no, Rick. No, Rick. Rick, Rick was expelled, and Roger well, remained. Rick was expelled. <laughs> Roger, Roger expelled himself. <laughs> um, Dave, you did. The, the lyric writing on uh, momentary lapse. I was wondering what you what you thought of that. If you enjoyed it, uh, where you got your ideas from? Gosh, um, the ideas just came out of thin air, um, um, or or from me, Dave, or <laughs> stolen off other people. Um, well, I didn't do all of them myself. I did some of them with a chap called Anthony Moore, who's a good friend of mine. Um, and where they came from? God, I don't know where where, where you can say lyrics come from. They, did, they just uh, hopefully arrive where well, you sit around staring at blank pieces of paper for days on end and eventually, um, out of a sort of general state of terror, things start appearing. <laughs> <laughs> Motivated by fear, once again. John, thanks for the questions and thanks for listening to the show. It's Richard's turn in Portland, Maine, listening to WBLM 102.9. Richard, you're on. Hello, David and Nick. Hi. Hi, Hi Richard. This is Richard Violet. Uh, I've got. Uh, oh, it's an honor. This is an honor talking to the, one of the most important rock legends, who was number one in stimulating and enhancing my imagination. Thank you. And this is nice, isn't it? <laughs> yes, you get up early in the morning and get stroked for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I got two questions. I'd like to get your opinion on, on my opinion, and uh, I'm totally against anything that conflicts and corrupts the human imagination. And for example, uh, too much music television is an em- it is an enemy to the imagination. I think it's time to have a video with a blank screen, blank screen through the entire song. This event will be an important asset to the human imagination. 
Is there a question well, lurking in there somewhere, Richard? <laughs> well, I, what you're saying is you're anti-television. Well, you could turn the television off and listen to it on your radio <laughs> or on your, on, your, on your gramophone. This is, this is my recommendation. That'll I get it. I have some sympathy. <laughs> I do have some sympathy with your, with your thought there, to be honest with you. I do agree that um, you know, sometimes a, a, a specific video can take away from your uh, I- imagination on, uh, on, on, on listening to music. And certainly, I, you know have had a lot of pleasure myself as i'm sure millions of other people have from lying down on the floor on them big cushions with the headphones on and and making my own video my own movie yes for for, for music i so. live movies yes richard what's your question yeah, yeah i was going to say that uh by that example of having a a blank tv screen will set an example for the younger people knowing to use their imagination just knowing that well my second question is, is uh, what do you th- what is your opinion on the book Saucer Full of Secrets by Nicholas Schaffner? Um, funnily enough, I've just been having a little read through that again for the last couple of days. Um, and overall, it's a, a fairly, a reasonably good picture um, of, of what went on. But it's, it's packed with little inaccuracies, which are sort of are very annoying when you read about things that have just... Um, he's just got them very slightly wrong, but wrong so they look like the opposite to what was the actual intention. But overall, it, it's not a bad book. I think he ran out of steam a little towards the end of it um, and sort of picked up all that um, rubbish that that chap Timothy White wrote. And um, I guess he was um, not feeling too well at the time because uh, he subsequently died, poor chap Nicholas Schaffner, I believe. Yeah, a little book review for you there. Richard, thank you for being on the show. We're going to play One Slip from Shine On, the brand-new box set by Pink Floyd. It's a Floydian slip. We are back. It is a special two-hour edition of Rockline. David Gilmore and Nick Mason are in London. I'm Bob Coburn in the Hollywood Rockline studio. Brian is in Richmond, Vermont, a listener of 106 WIZN in Burlington. And, Brian, you're on the show. Hey, Dave, Nick. I just wanted to first let you know that I've always been a really big fan, and I mean that most sincerely. Um, and I'd also like to tell you that I really liked your uh, La Carrera video that both of you guys produced uh, concerning your racing escapades in uh, Mexico there. Um, and I also want to express my relief that uh, Dave turned out all right after that horrible accident. Um, and I, I'm really interested in knowing in, as to how you guys first got interested in uh, auto racing. Well, um, it's Nick talking, and probably I—I I probably started the rot. Uh, I'd been interested in racing for a long time, and I think um, David started done a little bit of racing, and it was fairly easy to convince him that it'd be a good idea to go to Mexico and do this particular event. And in fact, we did a recce the year before. Oh, Dave did. <laughs> Dave did a very short recce. His car lasted about fifty miles. Um, it broke down before the start line, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I had to pinch someone else's. Uh, but it, it, it was fun. It was fun. But there, there was a crash that was involved uh, this last time? Is that there, there was it a was crash. It was just off. a little sort of minor sort of bump. It and was so. a minor bump for Dave, but our manager, who is uh, actually sitting here looking deeply pained, was the one who actually got hurt. <laughs> but he's fine now. Well enough to get no, up at 4.30 in the right, morning, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Dep- depends what you mean by fine. <laughs> Steve, tell him, Steve, tell him how you are. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> oh, That's Mastro Rourke groaning in the background. I, uh, I always told him if he didn't behave himself, I'd break his leg. <laughs> <laughs> the doctors always say you'll experience some minor discomfort. Yes. <laughs> uh, Brian, thank you very much. It is Bill's turn. He's in Colorado Springs, Colorado, listening to Kilo 93.9. Hi. Hi, what's up, guys? Kilo. Lord, what a name for a radio station. Yeah, I wonder where they got that, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I digress. Yeah, what was the inspiration for metal, in particular the song Echoes? What was the inspiration for it? Good Lord, you're trying to get us to remember something that happened over 20 years ago. <laughs> um, that's, that's not in the rule book. <laughs> um, I can't remember whether the inspiration we started just putting all these little bits of music together and turning them that into, into a piece. I can't say that there was a, well, a specific inspiration, was there, Nick? Well, there wasn't. I suppose, really, one would say that the, the catalyst that set the whole thing off was just that single note, that single sound from, um, oh, yes, uh, the, from the piano. 
piano and through the Leslie. Yeah. Yeah. But there was one, after dealing with a whole range of bits and pieces of musical ideas that, that had been sort of knocked together, there was, uh, there was one particular sound that everyone agreed was a really interesting and, and, a, and it just became a sort of launch pad for everything else. And that's just that note that sounds almost like an Aztec, that submarine spotting stuff. Yeah, it was uh, uh, Rick playing a piano, and uh, the piano was plugged, uh, had a microphone on it that went through a Leslie speaker, you know, one of those rotating speakers that they have on uh, Hammond organs usually. And it was just on the point of feeding back, and there was one particular note that was more resonant than all the other notes, and that nearly made it feed back, and it sort of created that sound, and Rick kept finding that note over and over. And, um, yeah, that's what started it all off. And that original bit of Rick sort of jamming that just just playing it is the actual beginning of the record um, we tried to recreate it later and couldn't get quite the same sound ever again um, and so we had to use that very original version for the very beginning and then chop it on the editing uh, block onto the rest of it later we would love to play echoes right now but it's so long we are going to instead play one of these days i believe mr nick mason's vocal debut in this song is that correct nick well, not my debut, but possibly my best-known public appearance. Yeah. He's, 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 all, he's also on Corporal Clegg, you know, on that uh, on ah, the Source Full of Secrets. Which predates you don't that. Have yes. to, you don't have to play that. It's all right. <laughs> don't have to don't play have it, to really. do it. <laughs> no. Well, here it is anyway. One of these days, Pink Floyd from Shine On, the box set on Rockline and the Global Satellite Network. It's a two-hour special edition of Rockline with Pink Floyd with David Gilmour and Mr. Nick Mason. I'm Bob Coburn. We have a Nick on the line right now from Syracuse, New York, listening to 95X. Hello and welcome. Hello, Mr. Gilmour and Mr. Mason. I'm sorry to keep you up so late, but i got to say I'm absolutely enthralled to be speaking with you right now. Mm, um, hi. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Uh, my question is, how do you think uh, the band changed um, musically after Roger left? Uh, my gosh. Mm. Well, we got a little less obsessive and uh, got back into the music. I don't know how we changed. We just uh, didn't really... There's no conscious change, you know. It's just um, the same old thing, just trying to make good music. Um, I can't really explain it any other way at this time in the morning. Well, I think at any time in the morning. I mean, it's... <laughs> Yeah, obviously different writers produce different different songs, but there's a certain there's something else that continues through. I think a slight change in sort of musical priority that um, for us um, uh, to, to put it back towards music rather than a vehicle for words. Do you ever foresee an amicable solution with Roger? It seems like this just drags on and on. A final solution, possibly. I don't know about amicable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a final solution. It's possible. It's possible, but it. What's it's, that nervous laugh there, Bob? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's possible, but it's a long way off. Well, um, sorry to hear that. Uh, I, I think I, this is a difficult question for me to ask, but I have to ask this: How, how do you split the revenue? Steal on this? yourself. Yeah, is, I will. How do you split the revenue on this? Uh, is it di just divided? Uh, how do you do it's, it? It's uh, it's divided as to the per the the splits on the records as they were originally. I mean, there's still uh, everything. Um, it's it's not a problem. It's not a uh, an area of argument at all. Uh, we we tend to find other things to argue about. <laughs> <laughs> More in the creative arena, sh shall we say? Mm. Yes, well, no. Mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Any arena. <laughs> Any arena, okay. Any arena. Nick, thank you for the call. Let's let Becky have her turn in Calgary, Alberta. Uh, she's a listener of CJFM. We welcome her to the rock line. Hi, Becky. Hi. Um, I just have a question for both of you guys. And that Hi. Is... Shoot. Hello. Um, where did you guys get your name? You knew it was coming. It was inevitable. <laughs> what, you mean, where did Dave get called Dave? Or, or, uh, My parents gave me a name. <laughs> and who named you Nick, yes. <laughs> I can't remember. Over to you, Nick. Oh, um, well, it's an old and deeply, deeply dull story of uh, there being two blues players called Pink Anderson and Floyd Council on a, an old blues record and I think it was Sid Barrett who actually put those two together and said let's be Pink Floyd and I think it was at a time when we were called the T-Set and I think we were actually working on a 
show where there were probably there was at least one other band called the Tea Set as well, and it was just too confusing and time to change. And there was subsequently in the 70s, I think at some point, there was a band in the States who took the surnames of those two people and called themselves the Anderson Council. But it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Becky, thanks for the call. You knew that one was going to come, and I think the time is now on Rockline. Time by Pink Floyd from the box set. Shine on nine CDs in this. Uh, two are The Wall and seven other albums. And uh, we have uh, more phone calls for David Gilmore and Nick Mason right now from Philadelphia. Donna is on the line, a listener of 94 WYSP. Donna, welcome to the Rock Line. How you doing? Hi, David. Hi, Nick. Hi, Hi Donna. How you doing? I have pretty good. I'm and yourself? So I'm so excited that I got this opportunity to personally thank you for all the thrills and the chills that your music has given me through the years. I have a question for you. you. Right. Okay. Why did you choose to call your box set Shine On? And that's one of my favorite titles, by the way. And Who did your box cover art? Uh, well, Storm Thorgerson, who is half of Hypnosis, who has done most of our artwork for the last 20 years, um, did, did this artwork for this. Uh, he's done, he did the artwork for most of the albums that are in this set. So um, he, he's, he's still there. And do what was the other part of your question? Uh, why shine on? Why shine on? Because we couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> oh, we could. We could actually think of lots of other things. I was particularly keen on a title which was the Big Bong Theory, but uh, we couldn't really get that off the ground on a majority vote. Um, it's. Uh, we had a look at lots and lots of titles for this thing. Shine on you, crazy diamond is the full title from the one on which you are here, and we just thought this uh, sh- calling it Pink Floyd Shine On would. Uh, show that we uh, it's it's not a sort of uh, bowing out retirement uh, boxed set it's just the continuation the continuation and uh, for those of you who have not seen the package the artwork is really uh, it's stunning in fact there's a collapsible slip case and as you assemble the cds in that something magically appears in the spine of the cds that uh, you're very familiar with on the, the dark right side order. of the moon if you get them in the right order yes <laughs> the uh, the Could prism be a bit of a challenge yeah. that's right the prism from dark side shows up yeah but you got to get them in the right order otherwise it makes no sense <laughs> whatsoever uh, donna thank you we have bill on the line now as we had the indian a listener of Q95. Welcome to Rockline, Bill. Dave? Hi. I can't believe I'm actually talking to you guys. I'm probably one of the youngest I can't employees. Believe that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was wanting to know, future tapes, are you going to do more solo work, such as About Face, or are you going to continue working mainly with the Pink Floyd name? I think um, certainly for next it'll be the Pink Floyd again. Um we're so lazy that it uh, hardly seems worth doing a solo one right at the moment. We're just, um, yeah, Pink Floyd next, I think. There you go. Bill, thank you very much. We're going to let Alan have his turn in Spring City, Tennessee, a listener of WIMZ-FM in Knoxville, and we welcome Alan to the program. Thanks. Uh, it's a rare pleasure to speak to you guys. Uh, i got a question and a plea. As a fan of Monty Python, I've, I can tell you guys are, too. I was wondering who... Uh, who in the group is a fan of Monty Python? There's one song that I don't know what it is, but there's backwards of uh, the sheep bit from one of the shows. I was wondering uh, who in the group uh, is with Monty Black's Monty Python. Well, we all were fans of Monty Python. I think I don't know that the um, the record you're referring to had anything to do with that, but uh, probably just a just a coincidence. But uh, yeah, I, I'm certainly we've had lots of giggles with the pythons i think most of us have and what is your plea alan i'm curious again please come to the southeast uh, united states so at least within driving distance <laughs> ah, he wants we'll, to, wants we'll to see certainly live, try yes. to all right yeah well we'll certainly try to it won't be for a little while but uh, we hope to get back concert at alan's okay. house <laughs> <laughs> yeah well or the party afterwards yeah that's just, right. just your address <laughs> alan thank you for being on we'll take a time out we'll come back in just a moment i know you're coming back with us it's a two-hour special edition of rock line with pink floyd on the global satellite network We are back. Uh, Nick Mason, David Gilmore, our guests right now from Pink Floyd. Two-hour special edition of Rockline and Bob Coburn. We go to Darien, Connecticut. Now Dan is on the line, a listener of 92.3 K-Rock in New York City. And we welcome him to the show. Hi, Dan. Hi, how you doing? 
Um, just want to say, great band. I love your shows. And I was wondering, you. have you ever considered using Alan Parsons as a producer again in the future? Um, no, we haven't. He's, he, he was an engineer, in fact, um, <clears throat> on Dark Side of the Moon. Um, not a producer, but uh, these are, let's not quibble over details. Uh, but uh, we haven't really thought about it. No, he's um, busy with his stuff. Was he hired by the, the studio or hired by you as a band? He was um, a, he was a, salar a salaried in-house engineer at TMI uh, Abbey Road Studios. Dan, thank you for the call. And we move on to Springfield, Ohio. Mike is on the line, a listener of 104.7 WTUE in Dayton, Ohio. <coughs> Hi. Hi, Dave. Hi, Nick. Hi. Hi. Uh, i got to say, first off, it's a pleasure to talk to you guys. I've, I've, me and my wife have been a fan of yours for God since probably day one. Uh, I've got a couple questions I'd like to ask you. Uh, when you wrote uh, Wish You Were Here, what, what was you thinking of when you wrote I mean, basically, what's the song about? Um, well, Roger wrote the words to that. You'd probably have to ask him, but I, I think it's... Um, um, there's a whole bunch of meanings in there to do with um, wishing that Sid was still um, not necessarily with us, but uh, in, in the band, per se, but uh, with us uh, mentally. Um, and I think he... Roger was probably wishing that all sorts of us were, were there in, in more shape than we were at the time. I think it's safe to assume Roger's not there to ask. Uh, we wish he was here. <laughs> and here it is. Okay, here we go. We are back with David Gilmore and Nick Mason. Wish you were here, fading away in the distance on Rockline, two-hour special edition. It's the exclusive broadcast premiere of Shine On, the nine-CD box set by Pink Floyd. We head to Pueblo, Colorado now. Mike is on the line. Another Kilo 93.9 uh, .9 listener in Colorado Springs. Uh, Mike, you're on the Rockline. Good evening, Bob, and good morning, Nick and Dave. Hi, Mike. Hi. Uh, I have a question for you, David. Uh, this is directed to you. I know that uh, you have uh, played with Paul McCartney and various other, well, I guess, quote, le legendary musicians. And uh, my question to you is, who do you uh, regret not having had a chance to uh, work with yet? Um, oh, my Lord. Um, Elvis Presley, Jimi Hendrix, um... I don't know. I've uh, I've never given it much thought, to be honest with you. I, I couldn't really give you a very reasonable answer for that. Who else do I think you think I ought to play with? Yeah, Dave. Well, it's been a real pleasure. Uh, he asked you a question there, Mike. Who do you, who do you think oh, well, he ought to play with? I think he ought to play with George Harrison. Work with George Harrison. With George Harrison. Clapton. He, well, he they hasn't. can both play guitar themselves. <laughs> That's a pretty good comeback there. I guess you have a point yeah. there, yeah. <laughs> uh, Nick, how about you? Anybody that uh, that you aspire to play with that you have not? Um, not particularly. <laughs> I mean, it's not something you think, oh, I, I, I would... It's not something you think very often. I suppose that probably... Um, Cream, really, I think Nick would like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll just carry Ginger Baker's symbols. Uh, no, I, I, I don't think it's something you sort of worry about a lot, about thinking about who you'd like to play with. You tend to um, enjoy the experience of playing virtually with anyone who asks you. So it's, uh, it's something that sort of happens to you rather than something that you engineer yourself. Mike, uh, thank you for being on the line. We're going to move on. We have Mark on the line in Dunn, North Carolina, a listener of 92.9 WZNS in Dillon, South Carolina. Mark, you're on the rock line. Hello, guys. I first want to say that my all-time favorite Pink Floyd album is The Wall. It's extraordinary. Thank you. Uh, you all are rock and roll veterans. What's your opinion on the music scene today? Opinion on the music scene today. Yeah, Ooh, that's always a tough one to answer. Mm, yeah, tough question. Well, I suppose, you know, if you hunt down through everything, just like always, there's uh, about 1% of the stuff that comes out that you think, hmm, well, that's really nice, but uh, I don't hunt as much as I used to, so I tend to uh, still buy old. Bob Dylan records and Neil Young records <laughs> myself because I'm a bit sort of... He's got a massive collection now. <laughs> I'm, 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 and I'm planning on getting into rap soon. It just hasn't quite 
hasn't quite happened for me yet. As soon as time allows, huh? You'll be moving yeah. into that. Yeah. Uh, Mark, thank you very much. We'll speak with Michelle in Colorado Springs. Kilo 93.9 making a big showing tonight on Rockline. Michelle, welcome to the show. Hello. Um, Hi, first, yeah. I want to say that I'm 18 and that you guys are probably the first rock and roll band I've ever listened to. And I've kind of grown up with you. So it's kind of really cool to talk to you guys. Um, let's see. I wanted to say that most of your music is really emotional and um, kind of real personal. It's not kind of like the canned rock and roll music that we normally listen to. And one of the songs that I really like is off of your Momentary Lapse of Reason tape, and it's called On the Turning Away. Yeah. And I just wondered if maybe you had an uh, inspired personal reason for writing this song. Um, well, it's a... Uh... It's a song about, you know, um, poverty and injustice in the world and a, and, a, and a plea for people to not turn their backs on it. And it's, um, yeah, it's a personal thing. Michelle, would you Something like to... I believe in. Michelle, would you like to hear that now? Oh, I'd love to. All right, this is for you then on The Turning Away by Pink Floyd. We are back. It's a two-hour special edition of Rockline with Pink Floyd with David Gilmore and Nick Mason. We have Gerard on the line in West Warwick, Rhode Island, a listener of 94 HJY in Providence, Rhode Island. And Gerard, you're on the air. Hello, David. Nick, how are you doing these early morning hours? I'm uh, fine, thanks. Fine. Sleepy. Okay. My question is, what did you think of the Roger Waters performance at the Berlin Wall concert, and was Roger involved at all in your box set, Shining On? Um, well, Roger was asked to, to to help on this box set, and uh, he gave one or two opinions, um, most of which aren't, aren't repeatable on the air. Um, <laughs> and as for the Berlin one, um, I saw the second half of it. I went to see Madonna that night at Wembley Stadium, and uh, she cursed and swore for hours. And uh, I went home and watched Roger's second half, and... I felt about the same as I felt when I left the war, uh, the, the Madonna one. Okay, uh, Gerard, <laughs> thank you for the call. And uh, <laughs> uh, moving right along. Yes, indeed. <laughs> -ding. Okay, uh, Wendy is on the line in Dallas, Texas, and I think we're going to bring her onto the show right now. She's a listener of Q102, <laughs> and Wendy, welcome. <laughs> hey, um, Dave, I've got a question for you. I've yeah. noticed that. Um, your music for your solo albums, in particular About Face, is really, really different for what you do for Pink Floyd. And I'm curious, do you have a different mindset whenever you're working on stuff just for yourself as opposed to whenever you're working on something for Pink Floyd? Well, it's not conscious or deliberate, so I don't really know how it happens. Um, um, I think probably one or two of the pieces on the solo albums are things that I wouldn't really think would be quite right for Pink Floyd, but a lot of them I would think would be fine for Pink Floyd. Maybe um, maybe you just do them slightly different. I guess you're right. I guess you just your mind is set in a different way when you're doing a Pink Floyd record slightly to, to what it is when you're doing a solo one. But I can't uh, tell you exactly what that is because um, it's not really conscious. Wendy, that's a good call. Thank you very much. Patricia is on the line in Denver, Colorado, a listener of 106.7 KAZY. Hi. Hi, this is Patricia. Don't forget Colorado next time you come. I'm obviously, I've been calling tonight. I have one comment, Dave, before asking you a question. One time you said something, some comment about French people. want to know that yeah. French people are very loyal and very faithful friends. I just flew to Paris to get the box set before I even knew it would be available in the States. So that's, uh, if, well, that, I, <laughs> if that's I, not do, Have I ever friends, said anything bad about French people? I'm not aware if I had. I, you I, did. I it's on tape. I think oh. it's during the tour about face tape. It's, uh, really? But <laughs> I don't think you meant it. But anyway, uh, I want to know before uh, I asked the question that before I even understood English, I loved Pink Floyd, mm. so the music talk before lyrics. That's an answer to Roger Waters. Anyway, uh, Roger Waters did the wall for charities, and you did Nebworth. I would like to know if you really do believe that artists have a responsibility to contribute and help raise awareness for some social problems or like AIDS or whatever. And if you do, which one do you personally, you and Nick, you know, uh, would like to help? Um, I think people have a responsibility to help and awareness in, in all these things. And uh, as musicians, um, some musicians are considered to be people. I think we all have some responsibility. And uh, the charities that uh, 
um, I tend to support tend to be the more global ones like Greenpeace and Amnesty International um, uh, and the Nebworth one was basically for an English uh, actually it's an English and American charity now um, called the Music Therapy Charity which um, uh, does work with autistic children in, in the US and in, and in England so those are the sort of things that I personally support. Could you elaborate a, on the on the uh, the autistic children and music therapy? That's an amazing project. They're getting great results, aren't they? They are. It's um it's uh, called the Nordoff Robbins Music Therapy Charity, and um, uh, it's been running and has been supported by the music business in England for many years, and it's now open in New York as well as uh, one of these places. Um, and the yeah, children and really they, respond, don't they? Yes, they teach uh, totally autistic children they, um, by means of music and playing with musical instruments and banging on things. Um, and uh, um, the only way these children communicate is through music. And you can see that they begin to understand things and show pleasure and things through a contact with music when they have shown really no ability to communicate in any, any way whatsoever beforehand. That's terrific. Patricia, thank you for the call, and you are correct. Everyone bears a responsibility in trying to help out. We're going to play the Dogs of War for you right now on Rockline in our two-hour special edition with Pink Floyd. And welcome back to Rockline, two-hour special edition Pink Floyd with Mr. David Gilmore and Nick Mason. And we have Scott on the line in Valley Home, California, a listener of 95.1 KDJK in Modesto. Welcome, Scott. Hello. Yes, I have a question for Nick. If he has any solo plans in the future, and does the Floyd have any plans for a theme album in the future like others they've done? A theme album? Uh, well, no solo plans because... Uh particularly because we're sort of just trying to get cracking on the on the next Pink Floyd album. Um, and that could take a while and it tends to sort of tie up the future as far as I can see it at the moment. Um, what was the second part of the question? I mean, it's, it's gone again. do a theme album. Again. Oh, a theme album. Concept. Uh, who knows? Um, I think it will just depend upon how what sort of shape the album takes when we get further stuck into it. Well, that could be a theme. Um, but there's there's no specific plan. There isn't a story that needs illustrating at this point. They're talking about talking about it right now, they said earlier, Scott. <laughs> so, uh, now, Momentary Lapse of Reason, if if my memory serves me well, to use the Bob Dylan line, uh, didn't you record that on a, on a boat? Some of it. Part, parts of it, right? Uh, yeah, we spent the first sort of uh, few months working on a boat, and then we moved to Los Angeles and there weren't any boats so we had to do it in the studio <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Scott thanks for being on it's Wayne's turn he's in Atlanta Georgia listening to 96.1 WKLS FM Wayne you're on thanks uh, hello David and hello Nick you know after uh, how y'all doing after Fine, knowingly yeah. having one of the world's largest Floyd collections and having the pleasure of seeing you guys in person, let me tell you, it is a real pleasure, a big honor to finally talk to you guys. Hey, for us hardcore collectors, can we get a documentary movie from you that we might, I mean, you might can actually take a lot of the songs off your box set, and there are corresponding videos, or at least I'm sure you can find some corresponding videos. What do you think? Um, well... It's 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 not a bad idea, but um, I'm afraid the idea of putting together video collections of old stuff is uh, is a very complicated one, and has um, it particularly is complicated legally, and un unless we all agreed on doing that, um, there are legal reasons why one can't do that sort of thing. I'm afraid. Yeah, I'm not sure anyway how much mileage there is in doing too much video to go to go with the music. I mean, this actually re comes back to a uh, much earlier question. And in a way, there's something quite nice about keeping the records as records rather than um, adding video to everything. Sounds like Wayne should be in marketing if he's not already, though. He's uh, thinking along those terms. We're going to play. That's uh, not Wayne from the record company, is <laughs> it? <laughs> I, I don't think so, no. Uh, we're going to play Run Like Hell right now while we have a chance. Uh, this is Pink Floyd on Rockline. Mm -hmm. 
Run Like Hell, originally on the wall, of course, and now on the nine CD box set, Shine On by Pink Floyd. Our guests have been David Gilmore and Nick Mason. I want to thank everyone for listening and for calling tonight. And a reminder, this coming Monday night, Eddie Money will join us for the full 90 minutes, and I think he's going to play live, too. Also coming up in the next few weeks, Bon Jovi will be here, and we have two uh, year-end Best of Rock lines. Couldn't fit it into one. We're going to have two, featuring some of the outstanding moments in this past year's shows. Some special thank yous tonight go to Kid Leo, Pam Edwards, and Jenny Drozd from Columbia Records, also Steve O'Rourke and Kate Winter from Imca Productions, and to Capital Radio in London and all their staff, especially to Dave West, and a very special thanks to Mal, too. And, of course, our very special thanks to the two gentlemen who have spent the last two hours with you and me, David Gilmore and Nick Mason. Thank you guys for being on, and uh, the box set is really an achievement uh, that you should be very proud of, and uh, the fidelity is amazing, what you've done with it, and uh, and the uh, the graphics and whatnot, and it's got to be a, a great achievement for you. Thanks Thank you, Bob. Lot. Yeah, thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure. Well, I'll see you next time and uh, work on that album, huh? Do more than talk about it, would you please? <laughs> <laughs> Send us your songs. <laughs> we Floyd fans want to hear from you immediately. Um, one final thing before uh, I let you go here. What about the albums that aren't covered? Will they ever appear on CD? Things like uh, Adam Hart Mother and uh, Umagama and albums like that. Uh, it's something we haven't actually discussed it yet, um, but um, I certainly have got it in mind as as a project to um, remaster those other things and, and get them out in, well, in some form or another. Yeah, we'd like to hear those as well. And again, our thanks to you. No promises. Uh, no, okay, we won't have any then. Uh, have a good uh, morning as you head on, on into the uh, London morning, and uh, thanks for being on Rockline with us. I'm, okay.